Hello friends, my name is Ronnie. I'm a part-time reseller. I sell mostly on eBay and whatnot. This is my monthly expense and sales report video. So uh, kind of got more into the resale game starting in 2022. Decided that I really wanted to try hard and sell a bunch of stuff. I enjoy the process of sourcing, of listing, of course of selling. So ever since then, at the end of each month, I like to look back on the month and kind of see, well, what kind of money did I spend on goods? What kind of money did I spend on supplies? How much money did I bring in? So that's exactly what you're going to see in this video. You can see all of my numbers already revealed from January, February, March, April, and now we get to cover May. So without further ado, let's go ahead and remove our first green box here. We had a total of 61 orders on eBay in the month of May, which is down quite a bit. 25 fewer items sold on eBay. But I feel like they were maybe like higher dollar because we're going to see a little bit later as we look through the rest of the numbers that really the dollar amount wasn't that different. So stay tuned for that one. On Whatnot, we had 11 auctions that we did throughout the month, which is pretty good. Um, I was doing two, sometimes three auctions, I think, through the first half of the month. And then I switched to just doing one a week. And I think moving forward, I'm probably just going to do one a week. So my Whatnot numbers are going to go significantly down in the future, I'm predict predicting, but at least for the month of May, uh, still in double digits for the number of auctions that I had. Next is gross sales. So that's the total dollar amount that everything's sold for. It doesn't bring into account selling fees, taxes, and shipping. On eBay, that was $1,657.88. So you can see, even though there are 25 fewer items, that number's not that much different from April, where I did $1,985.88. And 60 cents. Uh, it's really difficult to calculate this on whatnot. Like you can do it, but it doesn't do it for you automatically like eBay does. So if I go over to my eBay page, here's my sales report page. And you can look at any period of time and you can easily see, well, this, this is the amount of total sales, that number that I just shared with you guys, for the time period that I customized and threw in there. Here's the selling costs. Here's the net sales. It breaks it down. It gives you so much amazing information. And that is definitely something that eBay certainly still has going on for it. Um, all the way down to analytics on individual listings, which is great because, you know, I can look at a t-shirt like this that I knew, I know that I picked it up for a quarter. Um, I wound up selling it for maybe a dollar and my net sales were a dollar twenty-four. So it really gives you a lot better feedback, um, just just a lot more better analytics in general. If you want to do the quick flip and you're not super concerned or you're very confident in how much money you're going to be getting for the items that you're selling on whatnot, great. But I just I just love the analytics that you get on eBay because it's they don't really make it super simple on whatnot. Because over here on whatnot now. This is what it looks like. You get the total dollar amount you sold, so the that would fall under the gross sales, right? But then the total earned is what you get after their fees. So I could go in and I can add up each one of the uh, listings that I sold and get that total and then get the total for all that I earned. I didn't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I kind of went the lazy route, and I just got the net sales on whatnot because that's like actual real-world what I brought in. Just know that the fees on whatnot are very equivalent to what they what they are on eBay. Up next fees, so I paid $235.17 in selling fees on eBay. This month I did take the plunge and I now have my own eBay store. I, uh, I got the year subscription for the basic store, so that gives me a thousand listings per month uh, for free that I can list before it was 250. And once again this month I ran out of free listings about two weeks into the month of April. And I was like, I'm tired of selling on Mercari. I don't like it. I'm tired of selling on Poshmark. I don't like it. I just want to put all of my eggs into the eBay basket because that's where I've had the most success, honestly. That's where I've got the best track record. So I invested in the store. It's $22 per month. Um, and that get, that's going to give me lower fees on the backside. So it'll be interesting to see what my fees look like uh, for next month whenever I'm paying, you know, like, half a percent or a percent less depending upon the category uh, that I'm selling in. So the next one is shipping. There's no shipping costs associated with whatnot. That sounds great, but also you guys have probably heard me rant that I don't like that about whatnot in that, yeah, you don't, you don't take shipping into account on your own part, but also you're not getting money for the shipping supplies that you're providing. It's a net loss. So all the bubble mailers, 
uh, the plastic bags, business cards, all of that. All that has to be calculated into the whatnot auctions. And for me, at least, that's really hard to do that because I buy a minifigure lot and I'm like, okay, I bought this for $400. I need to sell each minifigure for $5. I'll just do the starting bid for five bucks because after fee, it'll be around $4. But then you pack 70 orders and you realize, well, I use 70 business cards, 70 plastic bags, 70 bubble mailers. That stuff isn't free. You've got to take that stuff into account. And if you think proactively and ahead about it, I think that's you, that's okay. You can do that. But I typically don't. So I like how uh, eBay kind of handles that. And also, whenever you sell an item on eBay, the shipping that you pay is usually a dollar to two dollars. In some cases, four or five dollars less than what you is what you pay versus what the buyer pays. So you wind up making a little bit of money on shipping. And that feels good in my mind, at least, because I know that my my costs uh, are covered there for the supplies that I'm doing. Yet another reason that I like eBay. So net sales for the month, we had $890.07 in net sales on eBay. Not great. You know, like we started out over 1000 and in February we are at 1500 Then in March, down a little bit at 1300 And then in April, 900 like just a little bit below 1000 And then this month... Again, just a little bit below $1,000 in total net sales. Um, summer slowdown, maybe. I had I had what I felt like were a couple of good weeks and a couple of really bad weeks. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of happens uh, moving into next month. But also, again, I was spending three nights doing whatnot auctions in the first two weeks of May. And probably more than that, getting prepared for them, right? From buying uh, the Lego minifigure lots to getting them set up to promoting. There's a lot of time that goes into this large number on whatnot. And that's great, $4,397.91 were my net sales on whatnot. That's that's fantastic. And that's after fees. That's my take-home pay on whatnot. Uh, but again, it's really tough to break that down and realize, you know, like, did I make money? Did I not make money? Especially when, now that I'm in the mode of well, I've got this minifigure from this eBay lot, this minifigure from this eBay lot, and it's all coming together, and it's like, well, I don't know really what to price stuff at. So it's kind of like that BrickLink conundrum that I had not too long ago. You know, you've got some minifigures that are selling, you've got some that are not selling, you paid this for this, you paid that for that, and it's going all over the place, and I like, I like my books to make a little bit more sense because whenever I list something on eBay, this is exactly what I do. I list the date that I listed it. I have a little description of it. Um, this is like earlier on. Let's go like to more current events so you can kind of see how I do it then. So this is today. The stuff that I'm going to list today that I still haven't gotten to. It's just a description, the weight of the package, uh, where I located that item within my store so I can go and pull it whenever it does sell, and then how much I paid for it. This is an exact science, right? I know that whenever that Black Widow brickhead sales for whatever it sells for, I know that my cost into it was $5. You can't do that on whatnot with individual minifigures. And that was my conundrum with BrickLink. And all the more reason that I feel like I am in the right mindset of moving away, <laughs> moving away once again from another platform, moving away from whatnot and just and just going back to eBay and doing doing my business there. Because I feel like it's uh, it's it's a more established and probably a I don't know a safer model safer probably isn't the right word but I don't know. I like it <laughs> I like the live auction format as well I guess like this month I got burned on a couple of auctions and I didn't make a bunch of money and then I you know I think about the time commitment I have into it and how I could be using that time to take pictures to go sourcing to listing items on eBay whenever I know my exact dollars and cents that I'm making on a per item basis. So I don't know. Ronnie's rambling. So $5,287.98. Chef's kiss. That's awesome. That's a lot of money to be bringing in. But <laughs> the cost of doing business. Whew, brace for this one. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lower it down just a little bit. So for supplies, reasonable, right on par with what I've been spending on supplies every month, 267.13. In April, it was 225 In March, it was 300 In February, it was on 188 So I'm spending about you know two to $300 each month in supplies. So that's bubble mailers, bubble wrap, tape, business cards, Ziploc bags, all of that stuff that you need, um, like membership fees, just cost of doing business kind of things. 
But goods, last month I thought, whoa, 1700, the month before that 2300, the month before that 1700. What do you think happens whenever Ronnie is flush with cash like I was from April when I had $5,400 to show from all of the stuff that I sold? If I have more money, I'm probably going to spend more money. Now I will say that I saved a lot of money too. So over half of this, that went directly into my savings account. The rest of it was reinvested in the business, as you can see there. $4,833.16 in total was my cost of doing business. I bought $4,566.03 worth of stuff during the month of May. The Pokemon Evolution Revolution has hit, and that is the majority of my, my cost of my goods during this month. Um, maybe it's maybe it's dangerous that the thing that I invest in is also the thing that I'm interested in hobby wise. You know, it was Lego moving more away from Lego every day now at this point and just going more into Pokemon. I like collecting. I like investing. I like making money and all of those things. I said it before. It's kind of like you're a, a drug dealer that likes to get high on your own supply. You know, I've got Pokemon cards sitting around. I'm like, man, those are great. I'd love to open those, but if I leave them sealed, they're going to be more valuable in just a couple of years. Uh, but that's why I think the Pokemon investing market is so interesting. It's different from Lego uh, in that you can you can keep a box of cards sealed, and it's a mystery what's in there. There could be absolute fire in there, or there could be absolute garbage in there. With a Lego set, you know exactly what you're getting whenever you buy that thing. So it takes a special kind of person, I think, to be able to buy something like Pokemon cards, sit on them for a few years, not open them, and then be able to resell them. I don't think that there's a ton of people that are doing that, judging by the market research that I've done, and I'm excited about it. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna bear some some awesome fruit here in just a couple of years. And, and like I said, it's fun to open as well. It's fun to hunt those deals down. So four thousand eight hundred thirty-three dollars and sixteen cents. Uh, I keep track of my supplies and my goods on these two spreadsheets right here. So we'll just take a look at that just so you guys can get an idea of what exactly went into that. So again, bubble mailers, uh, some top loaders to keep my cards preserved, double A batteries. I'm getting more into uh, trying my hardest to make sure that everything that I spend money on that's related to my business, that I keep track of that because I want that to be a write-off for taxes at the end of the year. I've never done this uh, on this scale where I've paid taxes, so I'm paranoid as all get out that I'm going to get to the end of the year and the IRS is going to be like, wow, you had a great year. You owe us $10,000. Thank you for that. I don't really want to owe the IRS $10,000. I don't even want to owe the IRS $1,000. So I want to keep track of everything, everything, and then some that I'm buying for the business. So AA batteries, absolutely, I use those for the business poly mailers, even more business cards because, I mean, <laughs> 70 shipments in a whatnot auction, the 200 business cards that I bought last month, they or 500, they evaporated very, very quickly. Bought a label maker, there's my eBay store subscription, and then some charging cords, right? Yes, that is a cost of doing business. I need that. For my goods, let's go down here and look at May. It's I knew it was bad. <laughs> whenever I'm getting there and I'm like, I have to scroll a lot even to even get through the list. So yeah, Lego and just a ton of Pokemon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You get the idea. There's probably like 30 or 40 entries that it's just Pokemon cards. We've got some Xbox controllers in here. We've got, we've got games in here as well. We've got Amiibo. We've got some Lego sets. Uh, it happens, right? It happens. But I'm keeping track of all of it whenever the IRS comes back and says, great, man, you made $50,000 or whatever I make in my, my eBay store throughout the year. I can come back and I can say, yeah, I, I did, kind of, but also I had to pay these fees to eBay. I had to pay these shipping costs. And then I had goods that I had to purchase as well. So the total amount of money that I'm bringing in is uh, very different from what you're wanting to tax me on. Because this month... Yeah, I brought in four thousand. No, I brought in five thousand two hundred eighty-seven dollars and ninety-eight cents. But in actuality, after my goods and my supplies, I only brought in four hundred fifty-four dollars and eighty-two cents. Honestly, I was shocked that that was a positive number after I saw my goods. Uh, but I calculated my goods before I did my whatnot auction, so 
whatnot kind of saved me, but also I don't know that I got the best prices on whatnot. Um, that's what that's another thing that I will say about whatnot is that you're not going to get the best prices on whatnot unless you have a large social media following. Like right now, I was just looking uh, to look at my whatnot numbers. Um, Harry Tornado, he's got a whatnot auction going right now. He's got 350 people in there watching him, feverishly trying to bid on stuff just to get a little piece of Harry Tornado, and he's making bank. He's doing real good. Little old me that gets maybe 10 to 15 people in my whatnot auctions, I'm going to be below market value on everything on whatnot. It's a quick flip. That's all it is. It's a way to get rid of merchandise. People are on their hunt for bargains, and they're going to get a bargain because you've got less effort, time, and energy getting stuff in front of people versus taking pictures, listing it on eBay. So you're going to make less. Uh, but yeah, I think moving forward next month, I'm really interested to see where the numbers lie. I know I've got at least one more big whatnot auction where I'm going to purge basically all my Lego minifigures that I've got other than my collectible minifigures. Uh, I need to sell those. I want to get those gone on whatnot. Um, a lot of the sets I'm going to purge as well, but for those, I'm going to do those on eBay. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see like how much stuff has changed in just a couple of months of doing this reselling thing. I mean, when I started, my BrickLink store was going strong. We were bringing in almost $1,000 on BrickLink. Got sick of doing that. You know, purged all of that. Got a ton of money in on Whatnot for it. And now here we are, not just a month after getting all that money from Whatnot for the BrickLink store. We're talking about closing down the Whatnot shop as well. I would be really interested in just having like a general merchandise Whatnot presence. You know, like clothing, just general goods that maybe are not moving very well on eBay, just as a way to kind of to, to get them out of the inventory and to move them along. Because I, I get to that point in my eBay inventory where if somebody makes me a lowball offer, if I see that white on white background like I've talked about in my weekly videos, if I see that, I'm like, yeah, you made me an offer. I get to move the merchandise. Great. Let's go ahead and accept that lowball offer. I'm good with that. But yeah, that's uh, my monthly sales report for May 2022. If you guys have any questions for me, please leave those in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching, and uh, hopefully we'll be uh, having a better month next month. That's always, always the goal, right? Have a better month next month. Take care, everybody. Happy buying, happy selling. We'll see you in the next one.